to be here this morning. And uh, it's it's been a couple years since I've been here, and so my husband was here last year and ministered, and so um, he said that he couldn't be here this morning, but you all are growing. That's exciting. There's more chairs here. Good things are happening. Amen? Amen. And so, hey, this first song is called It Is Well, and um, uh, basically... <laughs> When things happen in our lives, like it says it's going to in James chapter 1, when trials, when things happen, we're to count it all what? Joy. And so the only way that we can count it all joy is to know who our hope is sustained in. Amen. For things to be well with our soul, we have to know that our hope is in Jesus. And so this song is called It Is Well. And go ahead, Josh, and um, say it is well with my soul. Amen. Amen. Can you all clap with me? Make sure on beat. Come to the water and drink. The river is wild, living and free. Oh, we are alive. Leave all your fears on the shore. Run through the shallow, cause there's so much more. so easy it is well it is well it is well with my soul it is well it is well with my soul there is peace like a river where mercy and grace overflow amen come join the past in the song and wash all of yesterday's sorrow away oh we are alive amen join in the song everyone come and dance in the deep oh Lord. it is well it is well with my soul it is well it is well with my soul there is peace like a river where mercy and grace this part it's a hymn so sing it with me my sin oh the bliss of this glorious thought my sin not in part but the whole is now to the cross oh and I bear it no more praise the So good. In 2015, in September, or excuse me, in August of 2015, I came back from 
Foursquare Church Camp, and uh, I started having a lot of pain on my right side. And that was on a Friday, and by Saturday, uh, I was feeling even worse. And by Sunday morning, I was in the ER to a doctor telling me that I had a larger than a grapefruit size mass on my right ovary. They said, you need to be seen by an oncologist within 24 hours. And um, by that next morning, I had went to, the, to uh, the OBG doctor that was there locally, and she said, um, she came in the room. Her, her eyes were filled with tears. I had never seen her before. And she said, we have to get you to an oncologist ASAP. You are so young. And at this point, I didn't know what was happening why it was happening. I had just come from leading worship at a church camp, spending time in the presence of Jesus, yet something was going wrong in my body. It just didn't seem right. And so I remember leaving there that morning from the doctor's office, and it all hit me, and I was crying, and I went to go be tested uh, for the blood work side of the cancer, and so I went to be tested. Uh, I had called another doctor because I just felt like before I went on to this oncology appointment that I needed to go see uh, this other doctor that the Lord kept laying on my heart that was in liberal Kansas, so it was another 40 miles away. And um, I, when I called, they said, it's going to be a week and a half to two weeks because he's completely booked. And I said, well, um, if you get my records in, can you just let me know? By the afternoon, within about four hours, they called me back to say, we want you here this afternoon. And I knew that it was bad. And so I ended up going to liberal. Uh, my church began to pray. Uh, our president of the Foursquare movement, Glenn Burris, began to ask for people to pray all over our entire movement, uh, not even in just the United States, but around the globe, to pray and believe that God was going to heal me. And so I ended up uh, going there. The doctor said, we're going to be here to walk with you through everything. Um, we, he, he was a man of God, which I didn't know that. And I believe, just like Pastor Bruce said during Sunday school this morning, when Holy Spirit leads you, you go with that leading. Amen? You don't wait and not lean on your own understanding, but you lean upon him. Amen? And so I leaned upon Holy Spirit to say, Why? I, it's, this is not a thought that I thought on my own. It must be from you, Lord. And so I moved in that area, and I went to go see Dr. Knutson, and he prayed with me, and he said, I'll be here to walk with you the entire way through. Uh, that night, I was scheduled. At this point, uh, let me back up. At this point, the mass that was inside of me was twisting. It was a called it was called a septated mass, and it was had different parts to it, and it was twisting in my body. And every time it twisted in my body, it released harmful toxins in my body that was causing me to immediately get sick. And so I was in a wheelchair. And I remember uh, that night, it was on a Wednesday, and uh, m a guy from our church who now drives the bus for me, this is just all crazy, but he, he called me and he said, I feel like tonight at church we're all to take our shoes off at the door because the Lord is going to make it holy ground. And we came to that church service. We, all, we, we walked into the church, and there were shoes everywhere all over the room, and we, I could not stand at that point uh, because of the mass, and I stood for two and a half hours leading people in the presence of God, worshiping, and I remember that I felt like the glory of God was coming down upon me while I was leading worship, and I went into the surgery the next morning, and the doctor came into my family and said, I don't know what's changed, but it's not cancer. They said, we removed everything, we took everything out, but it's not cancer. Now, here's the point that I want to make with all of that, that it was well with my soul, even when I was going through that trauma. But what happens sometimes when we have faced something and the Lord has brought us through it, but then we face something else, and then maybe you have to go through it. Sometimes you have to stick in it. Two months after that, uh, an endocrinologist told me, you need to go into surgery. Something's wrong. I began to lose my voice, 
and I began to have all these endocrine issues, and um, they told me that I had stage 3 thyroid cancer. This is two months after I went through this surgery. And so uh, I went into the doctors again. I would not suggest having two major surgeries within two months of each other. <laughs> um, and so I went through that, and then within a month later, I went through treatment. And um, during that time, when the first time that I went through uh, all of the, the things that was happening in August of 2015, the first time I was very strong. I had a lot of people who were encouraging me, and I was I was strengthened, uh, not just because they were standing with me, but because I was strong on my own, okay? Two months fast forward when I had been through surgery, and I was tired, and I wasn't used to sitting and resting a lot, um, I wasn't as strong physically or mentally or spiritually. And so when it hit me again for the second time, I had to lean upon other people in our congregation to help strengthen me. That is why this congregation right here that you have is so important. Okay? Corporate settings of worship is so important because things are going to happen in your life that sometimes you can't handle it on your own. But your brothers and sisters in Christ, listen, if Moses needed some help holding up his arms, then we need some help too. Amen? And so... I believe that the Lord sent me, my church family, and other people to hold up my arms. And during that time, I was approached by, uh, this is just the icing on the top, because being healed was was good enough for me. But God says, no, I'm a good, good father. I want to keep blessing my kiddos. And so uh, that same month that they diagnosed me with stage 3 thyroid cancer, I got a call from a gentleman in Nashville uh, from a major record label, and he said, hey, I've heard you sing. Um, one of the pastors sent us a, a CD that we ha you did at your church, and um, we would like to talk to you about signing with us here in Nashville. And I said, is this a joke, first of all, because that just does not happen. <laughs> and I was like, I know all these people. They they send in their, their, their music to all these labels, and then they never get heard. They just stack on their desk, or that's what I, I had in my head, and I haven't done anything to do that. But here's the deal, guys. The Lord was saying, I have a hope and a future for you. And just like this lady over here, God will give you much, much more than you can hope or imagine. Amen? And so I believe that God... God was saying, I have a future ahead for you. And so in January, get this, your vocal cords and your thyroid are very close. My surgery took over three and a half hours to remove my thyroid. It was three times the size of a normal thyroid. And so they removed it because they didn't want to damage my vocal cords. And so um, it, uh, it was very interesting that I was... I was asked to do a, a, a song, an album. During that time, I wrote 10 songs that are all on this first album out there. All of these songs are, are that, I, uh, that I wrote, and a lot of the songs, and Josh, the next song I'm going to sing is Be Bold, Be Strong. But uh, the, the during that time, I went through a lot of ups and a lot of downs. And that was in November when I began to go through treatment, and uh, I finished it up in December. And then in January... I was recording an album, and I sang. They gave me three days to record all of my music vocally, and I did it all in one day. Listen, God sustains you. When he's in it, you can't lose. That doesn't mean that you're not going to have to walk through some stuff. That means he's never going to leave you nor forsake you. And as you walk through that stuff, because he is your strength, you can count it all joy. Amen? Amen. So this next song that I'm going to sing is called Be Bold, Be Strong. And the Lord basically had to give me a Holy Ghost whooping that said, listen here, have I not commanded you to be bold and to be strong? I am with you no matter what you go through. And so I pray this song encourages you that no matter what you're going through, you can be bold and you can be courageous for the Lord, your God, your creator is with you. Go ahead. Amen. It's good. It's good this morning. God is good. No matter what. Amen. Three stones and a sling did amazing things. What giants do you face today? An uphill climb, do you feel blind? Do you feel your love? 
just your way. Three normal guys who would not bow to lies. Do you feel the fire roll around? And the thoughts crowd in, but you won't let them. You need a miracle to win. So be bold and be strong. Listen and put up a good fight. Or oh, sometimes it feels like you're losing, but you keep carrying the light. Walk around those walls, no matter big or small. Shout and they will fall down. And be bold, be strong. This is the right of your life. Amen. Amen. sad everywhere where is the joy today does love exist is hope in the midst do you feel this way dying and losing to your heart's content what more could there be oh the answer is right in front of you what is not a mystery amen so be bold and be strong church and put up a good fight oh sometimes it feels like you're losing but keep carrying the light walk around those walls no matter big or small shout and they will fall down be bold be strong this is the right of your life listen in exodus 14 14 the lord says that he'll fight for you you need only to be still so whatever you go through know that he's fighting for you amen battles they're all around you amen can you testify to that and they're pushing from all sides now listen walk around those walls no matter big or small he will fight for you all he's waiting is for you he wants to fight this battle for you amen be bold and be strong church or put up a good fight or oh, sometimes it feels like you're losing but keep carrying his light walk around the walls no matter big or small shout and they will fall down be bold be strong this is the right of your life this is the right of your life Amen. 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 Well, last year in February, uh, God, I'm telling you, he'll do much more in you than you can hope or imagine. If you'll just le listen to him, if you'll just trust the Lord, if you'll just lean into him, he'll take you places that you could not imagine. Because listen, I myself am not good enough to do what he's allowed me to do. It's him. I'm the vessel. And so if we'll look at our lives like that, then I'm telling you, he will do big things through you. I don't care if you're a cashier at the grocery store. God will send somebody through your line that needs a word from God, and you're that vessel that can, can show them Jesus. And so uh, in, in last year, I got a phone call from my, my management. They called me and they said, hey, um, this group on TBN, does anybody know what TBN is? Okay, so TBN, they, they contacted us and they would like you to come share your story. And I said, well, it's got to be a joke because I don't, how would they know who I am? And so uh, the, the group Hour of Power, have you ever heard of that? Hour of Power. Um, even honestly, they, they flew me out there and I, I went out there with uh, another friend of mine who travels with me 
And uh, I remember going that morning and I kept telling her, I kept saying, Anel, this is probably all a joke. Like, I just, I'm telling you, God will blow your dreams out of like the waters. I mean, like, I just was like, are you sure, Lord, that this is really real? I remember showing up there that morning going, they're probably going to kick me out of the makeup and uh, room because I'm, <laughs> you know, I'm not supposed to be here. And I remember I went in there and they said, Melinda McClasson, we're so excited to have you. And I thought, is this real? This is the real deal. <laughs> and I remember going in there and they said, well, now the first service, you're going to do this. And the second service is the real, the live one. We send this one all over the world to br be broadcasted in all these different nations. And, uh, and I thought, uh, this is the real thing. This is really how they said, don't move off of this X right here. D make sure you stand sideways so the TV and the audience can see you. And I thought, I, you know, I don't want to mess up. They're going to kick me off this stage. And anyway, it was really exciting because, listen, <clears throat> I got to share my story of the trials and the traumas. Not that they're any bigger than anybody else's. But the Lord allowed me to share those things. And I begin to get emails. I begin to get letters from people saying, thank you for giving me hope. If you can do it, I can do it. And I was able to sing that song, and it's aired all over the universe. And it's, it's God. It is God. And I'm telling you that it doesn't matter how big of the victories that you have, or maybe they seem small to you. God will use them one step of faith at a time. doesn't matter if you're a kid in here. If you're a teenager or if you're an adult, God will use you if you'll allow him, if you'll be faithful. This next song that I'm going to sing is a song that is actually on my, my new album. It aired at number one six times, and I have no idea how. It's God. I'm telling you it is God. It is not Melinda McGlasson. It is the Lord. And uh, this song is called Trust Him. And um, I basically was, w I don't watch a lot of TV. I I just don't. I, I don't find it most of it. It's not very exciting to me. <laughs> and so uh, I remember I turned on the TV, and it was when all the Black Lives Matter things was going on. It was when uh, there's just so much hate and hurt whenever I turn on the TV. And so, um, and it's interesting that the news loves to report everything bad, so you don't see a lot of the goodness that's actually happening. And so I remember seeing all that stuff, and I was thinking about traumas and trials that are going on in, within my family and with people that I know. And a lot of the Christians walk around like this instead of like this, and so I can't tell the difference between them and the church and, you know, just stuff. And so the Lord just told me one day, he said, if they would just trust me, if they would just lean into me, I'll give them a hope and a rest that I promise that I'm going to do because it's a promise and God does not go against his promises, but they have to trust him. So go ahead. I pray that the song ministers to you all. Heartache, it will come and go. Lost gain. There's more to this life than what you're going through. Rest be held, lean into his arms and remember you're not alone. Breathe in, let go, he already knows. Just say to yourself, it is well with my soul. Trust him.
be held lean into his arms and remember you're not alone breathe in let go he already knows just say to yourself it is well with my soul amen rest be held lean into his arms and remember you're not alone breathe in let go he already knows just say to yourself it is well with my soul trust him oh church trust him Oh, trust Him, trust Him, it is well with my soul. Yes, amen, amen. It's okay this morning? Amen. I was telling Pastor Bruce and Miss Kara, I said, your church is so friendly. And let me tell you something. As, a, as pastors, uh, that when we hear that from our church, people that come into our church, that makes us feel like, yeah, that makes us feel good. <laughs> because, you know, we want people to feel like, they belong and we want people to when they see us this is what when they come into your congregation which I believe they do because I I feel that when I come here is that they should feel love and they should feel Jesus and I feel that when I come here and so thank you for being that type of church thank you for being that type of church that opens your arms Pastor Bruce and uh, it's a reflection of who you are as the pastor and I really appreciate that from another shepherd to a shepherd and uh, God is so good amen there's a song that you all sing, and I honestly wasn't even meaning to sing this, but you all sang it in, in, um, in worship today. It says that I am who you say that I am, that I am chosen. And on uh, May 18th, many years ago, <laughs> I uh, my birth mother couldn't take care of me. You see, she was... Um, she was a young lady who already had a child that she couldn't take care of in Tulsa, Oklahoma. And she was working a bar at a bar at nighttime. And uh, the bouncer told her that uh, one night when it was raining, he said, I'll take you home. And so that way you don't have to walk in the, in the rain. And um, he ended up taking her past his house and took her inside and he ended up raping her. And when she thought all of her life was just ending and crumbling when she already had one child she found out that she was pregnant again and she thought god are you even there like i i don't my parents have abandoned me i don't have anybody to help me here and so um she ended up moving uh in to live with her friend and that said that they could she could help her with the baby and um Something happened there with her friend, and long story short, she ended up again in a homeless shelter area in Tulsa. And uh, one day, she was she was wa uh, walking with her baby Aaron, and she was walking down a sidewalk with a stroller that these homeless guys had gotten out of a dumpster and fixed it with some stolen tape that they found at the Five and Dime store. And um, she was walking the baby, and she ended up on this church parking lot. Um, and she just looked up at the steeple and she said that she said, God, if you're here, I just, I just need to, uh, I just need to know because I feel so alone. I feel so abandoned. I feel rejected. I feel betrayed. Just anything that you can just feel, you know? And, um, all of a sudden the wind kind of picked up and this piece of paper blew and it hit on her leg and she would have normally just taken the crumpled piece of paper and just kind of let it go but something inside of her told her to pick the piece of paper up and so she did and she pulled it back and she began to wipe it off with the the dirt that was on it and it said Owasso Baptist Children's Home there is still hope so she went to a payphone where she only had a few cents in her pocket and she went to a payphone and she put the money in there and she nervously called 
and said, hi, my name is Susie, and I already have a baby, and I'm pregnant with another baby, and I can't, I can't do this. I need some help. Fast forward a little bit. There was a man and a woman who were pastors way across the state, and they had been waiting for a baby for a long time, pleading and asking God, please hear our prayer. And I believe that God has a plan. And my birth mother, Susie, had me. And I was put into foster care for less than a month. And my mom and dad adopted me from that Owasso Baptist Children's Home. So when I hear songs that says, I am who you say I am, man, it registers with me. When I hear songs that says, I am no longer slaves, and when it says, when it gets to the bridge and it says, you split the sea so I could walk right through it, you drowned my fears in perfect love, you rescued me so that I could stand here and sing that I am a child of God. And I look at that and say, God had a plan. He had a plan. I was able to connect with my birth mother two years ago in May, and we began to talk, and she shared this story with me, and it was incredible what God has done in their lives. I found out that I have an older sister that she ended up, she kept Aaron um, and raised her, and then right after I was born, she got married to a man, and they had two twin girls, and he ended up being a schizophrenic psychopath, and he tried to kill all three of them, and the mother. So again, when I hear songs that says, you rescued me, so that I could sit here and sing. It's the truth. You know what? Sometimes we're going to have to go through stuff, but God still says, I'm going to be there for you. I'm never going to leave you nor forsake you. So if you are in this room and you just feel like, yeah, you've kind of been forgotten, no. Jesus says that he knows every hair that is upon your head, that you are so precious to him, like the grains of the sand. And let me tell you, there's a lot of grains of sand that you're so precious to him. And so I just want us to sing that, uh, that, that chorus. I don't know if you all can put that up on the screen or not. And I just want you to think how precious you are to God. That you're chosen, that you're forsaken. That you are who he says that you are. Let's sing that together. I am chosen, not forsaken.
perfect love, oh Lord. You rescued me so I could stand and see that I am a child of God. I am, oh I am a child of God. Well, full of faith, Lord, I am a child of God. Cause I'm no longer, cause I'm no longer a slave to fear. child of God. Oh, no longer, I'm no longer a slave to fear. Oh, no. I am a child. Come on, this time I want to sing, sing, I'm no longer a slave to sin. I'm no longer a slave to sin. Come on, rejoice in that. Because I am a child of God. child of God. Can you rejoice in that? Amen. Amen. Yes, he's so good. Yes, you may be seated. Amen. Yes, God is so good. He's so good. Yes, he's so good. So I wrote this song um, for a church camp, actually, for a youth camp, and sometimes I think we know what the Bible says, that we are who he says that we are. We know that we can do all things through Christ who strengthens us. And we know that he's never going to leave us nor forsake us. We know what her Hebrews 13 eight says, that Jesus Christ is the same yesterday, today, and forever. But sometimes, sometimes, the word doesn't manifest as quickly as we hope it would. And sometimes we're just a little too human and we forget. Amen. Can anybody attest? testify to that? Okay, good. I'm not the only human in here. And so uh, this song, basically, it just was the Lord. I was writing it for someone else. And a lot of times it's funny, like when I go to speak at events or speak for youth conferences or women's conferences or whatever, sometimes God is, I'm thinking that I'm preparing a message for them, but God says, hey, let me clean you out for just a minute. And so uh, whenever the Lord was, I was thinking that I was writing this song for them. But God said, no, I want to remind you of who I am. I want to remind you that in me, you're restored. You're made whole. You're renewed. That your past is gone, Melinda McGlasson. It doesn't matter. And so uh, I pray this song ministers to you all. Good. I come 
God, it changes everything. Cause in you, yes, I am made whole. I am renewed. I am restored. Oh, in you, my past is gone. The new is put on. All things are good. actually believe I sang this song the last time that I was here, but there's a lot of new faces. And so this is one that I always love to sing when I go somewhere. Um, one morning I was waking up from treatment and my face was so swollen and uh, from all the radiation and I was having a moment of fear. Have you ever had fear before? And so um, I remember the scripture that says, <laughs> God has not given us the spirit of fear, but of power, love, and a sound mind. And so the Lord was having to remind me that I was not of sound mind at that moment. And so uh, during that time, I was in complete isolation and I couldn't take anything, whatever was in that room, I couldn't take it out of the room with me. And so I was like, the Lord was giving me a song to write. And I knew that my memory wasn't going to sustain like all those words of the song. And so um, I just put it into a phone that I could throw away. And then I texted it to myself. See, I'm yeah. the sound mind started working. And so anyway, uh, this song is called Great is Your Faithfulness. And here's the cool thing. I go and minister all over. And when I, a lot of times whenever I bring the word, I don't know those people because I've never seen a lot of them before, but Jesus does. And so I say, Lord, what, what do you want to say to your people today? And so he'll, he'll tell me some words. And so this morning, I just, whatever you're facing, whether you're a kiddo, whether you're a teenager, whether you're an adult, that he's faithful. That when worry and things try to cloud your vision and stuff's always going to try to get in there between you and Jesus. I always tell my boys, I have three boys. I have a 16-year-old, a 13-year-old, a 10-year-old. I always tell them, I said, you got to be one step ahead of the devil because he's always going to be there to cause separation between you and Jesus. And it doesn't change for when we get to become adults. And if we teach our kiddos that whenever they're little, they'll know how to combat the enemy. And so whatever you're facing, whether it's hardship at job, whether it's a health issue, whether it's missing your kids, 
whether it's something else completely different, just know that God is faithful. And that if you'll trust him, I'm telling you, I'm telling you, you cannot go wrong and he'll never leave you, not for a moment. If he did it for me, little old me, if he did it for David, when he was about to go up against Goliath, when he did for Shadrach, Meshach, and Abednego, when they were faced in the fires, he'll do it for you. Just trust him. When worry clouds my vision and storms are rushing, God, I look to you. You are faithful. When trouble comes and darkness presses in, I trust you. Great is your faithfulness, O oh God. Your love and compassion fell not. Your mercies are new. All of my mountains will move. Oh, great is your faithfulness, O oh God. When my mind begins to wonder and you remind me you are steady oh lord you're always with me when fear surrounds me you allow me to see your provision Your love and compassion fell not. Oh, your mercies are new. All of my mountains will move. Oh, oh great is your faithfulness, oh God. Oh, Lord, oh, you are faithful. You're so faithful. perfect two months ago the doctor called me and said you have another mass on the left side of your ovary come on give me a break okay I said that's all right I've already done this before what doesn't kill you makes you stronger all right and so I said all right what are we gonna have to do he said well we got to go in there and we got to remove it and we're gonna try to save everything else and so I said, I've already been down this road. Hit me. And so church started praying. I didn't act like it was a big deal. Sure enough, we went in. They removed things, and it wasn't cancer. And so I am here to tell you that I am two years cancer-free. Thank God. And it's going to stay that way. And so <laughs> um, the Lord allows me. You know, some of you, your place is at a desk. Some of you are homemakers. Some of you are out on the field working somewhere. Some of you are here in the temple. Some of you are 
uh, working at schools or, or construction or police, whatever your position is, just be faithful where you are, and God will make you ruler of many. That's not so that you can look great in front of others, but so that you can build the kingdom of God together. Amen. Amen. And so uh, I'm going to close with this last song, but before I do that, I'm going to kind of just share. Um, you know, uh, whenever I first started traveling, it was really hard for me to get up and say, well, I have a table out there or I have CDs for sale or whatever. But as I've gone through this, the Lord has had to work some things out in me to say, you know what? It's not a vanity thing, Melinda. People know your heart. This is a ministry thing. And to do the ministry, it is very expensive. Let me tell you, all of my music is around every, it's all around the globe. And to do that, it takes a lot. And so uh, I actually work a second job so that I can help sustain that side of the ministry. It doesn't hurt me. It's what I feel like God has called me to do. Um, but uh, I have partners all over the world who help. Every time that uh, you buy a, either a CD, this is the first one that I have out there that I shared, Great is Your Faithfulness, Be Bold, Be Strong. This is the one that I wrote when I was going through cancer. Um, every time you buy a CD, it goes directly into the ministry. I do not profit one penny before Jesus is my witness. This goes to help people around the globe. And it takes us doing it together. And unfortunately, the ministry is expensive to get around the globe, but I'm telling you what heaven's going to look like, it don't matter how much it costs here because God is faithful. I'm not worried about it. I really am not. Um, whenever I said they asked me to do another album, I said, you know, how much <laughs> the natural side of me said, well, how much is that going to cost? People began to pour in and I'm not tell I'm, I'm not kidding you from my flying to Nashville to doing everything, you know, when you think you get signed to a record deal that they're going to take care of everything, they don't do it. No, they don't do it. <laughs> but it's okay because God is faithful. And so this next CD, p people begin to partner with me all over and said, we want to see uh, this go everywhere. And so I had someone message me from France two days ago and said, hey, we're listening to your music over here in France. We just want to say thank you for being a blessing. Uh, the song, <laughs> yeah, yeah, God is good God is good has nothing to do with me I'm just the vessel just like you're the vessel wherever you are uh, the song on here my deliverer that I'm fixing to sing has hit number one on the charts I don't know it stayed number one the entire month of April and began to stay number one in May and so uh, whenever I think about that my music's in Singapore France it's in uh, Switzerland it's in the United States um, but just it, when I think about that I'm like God he can do much more than you can hope or imagine amen and so uh, the, the, all these songs are on there and this song this CD is out there as well there's shirts out there um, it's really cool because whenever I go places and I see my shirt I had somebody send me a picture the other day and said hey we were in Michigan and we saw one of your shirts and I thought well that is just crazy uh, but my shirts they're just ministry I have one out there it says it is well with my soul there's another one out there that it says let me pray about it because sometimes we're really quick to just do something we haven't thought about it and so I'm really good to, that's that's for me because I'm like yes I'll do it I'll start stacking chairs I'll start doing this I'll start taking five other jobs and then my husband's like why don't you pray about that for just a second let me let's just let's have a come back to Jesus moment and let's think about that and so I, that shirt is for me but anybody else who wants to benefit off of it is great um, and then I have another shirt out there uh, there's one that says heaven to me and then there's another one that I believe it says worship him because apparently I say that a lot whenever I lead praise and worship I didn't even realize it but now whenever I'm in worship and I say worship him I'm like I do say that all the time. <laughs> and so anyway, they made one for, for that as well. And then there's just some business cards. Um, uh, it has all my social media stuff on there. If you if you ha don't follow us on social media, then please do. But my husband and I are, are blessed to be pastors of a church in Guymon, Oklahoma. It's doing really well. And uh, we pray for you all. Pastor Dallas checks on your pastor quite often and vice versa. And so we're just excited about what God's doing here. Keep doing it. Keep doing it. So thank you for allowing me to be here this morning, and I'm going to close with this song, My Deliverer. You want to clap with me? Shadows in the night Won't take away my joy Steady is your love In you I am secure 
driven by your heart held in perfect grace whatever comes my way amen will never crush my praise even in the darkest valley your peace is rushing through me even with the fire surrounding i know that you stand with me even as the flames rise higher i am safe i will not fear i can hear your voice like thunder my hope and my deliverer aren't you thankful he's your deliverer amen Defender of my life, Savior of my soul, how could I want more when I am all yours? You are my home, Amen. even in the darkest valley, your peace is rushing through me, even with the fire soon. within you